What's going on guys? Welcome back. I came across a super nice menu by an agency called Agence Cartier. And honestly, I looked at it and I had no idea how to make that. So I had to remake that menu. So I separated this video in multiple sections and I'm gonna take a look at all the inner components of that menu. And I'll use Next.js and Frame Motion to remake it. And as always, you can find a live demo and the source code in the description below. All right, so I have a very basic Next.js application here and we should have something like this, a blank page to start this tutorial. And now the first thing I wanna start with is the button component. There's two animations inside of it. There's a perspective animation on the text and there's a sliding kind of effect with an overflow hidden. So let's see how we can make this. The first thing I wanna do here is go inside of the layout and that's where I'll put the header. In a real world application, you wanna put it inside of the layout most of the time because that way the header will persist across multiple pages. All right, so here what I'm doing is creating a components folder and inside of it, I'm putting a header and a button and then I'm just initializing those components and importing them inside of the layout. And so we should have something like this. We have the header here inside of the layout, and then I have a header components, which looks like this. And inside of it, I have a button component, which looks like this. And so I'm gonna start with the simple styling for the header. I'm just gonna add like a button paragraph here just to see what we're doing. And then I'll go in the styling of the header and I'll start adding some styling. And the first thing I wanna do here is put it in position fixed so that when I scroll, it stays at the same place. And then I can do like a right 50 pixel and a top 50 pixel. And that way the header is like sticking to the right side of the screen where I want the menu to be. And that's basically gonna be it for the header. And now we can start working on the button. So I'm just gonna delete the paragraph here. We won't need that. And I'm gonna add a little styling here. I'm gonna call this the button and I'll import the style sheet here. The first thing I'll do here is set a certain height and then I can put like a background color just to see how it looks. Okay, so I'm just gonna reverse those values here. And I'm also gonna add a border radius of 25 pixels so the corners are rounded and we should have something like this. And I'm just gonna do a cursor pointer as well, just so we have like the cursor indicating that we can click on that. And then if I look at the demo here, we can see that the animation, when I click on the button, there's like two parts of it. There's one that's written menu and there's like another button underneath that's written close. So I'm gonna do that right now. So I know I have two buttons, so I'm just gonna create two div. And I have one where there's a menu and another one where it's written close. And then I can add a class to those and it looks something like this. And so I'm just gonna go into styling here and I'm gonna specify that the elements, all of them should have of 100% and the width of 100%. So it takes the full width and height of the button. And then I know that one needs to be underneath the other. And so what I'm gonna do is target the second one and I'm gonna put it in position absolute with a top of 100%. And it looks something like this. And I'm just gonna add a background color so we can see clearly what's happening here. Red for the first one, and I'm gonna do like orange for the second one. And now we can see this. And now to have the text in the middle, what I'm gonna do is the magic display flex align item center and justify content center. And now everything is centered here. And then all I have to do is add an overflow hidden. And now to actually hide the element that's in position absolute, for the overflow hidden to work, I need to also put it in position relative. And now we can see that we don't see the second one that's at the bottom. And now all I have to do is find a way to translate it when I click on the button. I'm gonna remove the overflow hidden so we can clearly see what's happening. And I'm gonna put the right colors. So I'll remove the red here, I don't need that. Remove the red here too. And I'm gonna put the color that I want. And then the second one is black and the color inside of it is white. And also I want the text to be in all caps. So I'm gonna do text transform, uppercase, and we should have something like this. Now all I have to do is find a way to translate those divisions up and down when I click on them. So I'm gonna go in the root of the header here and I'm gonna create a state that's gonna track if the menu is open or not. So I'm gonna have here an is active and a set is active, which is going to be equal to the use state from React. And I'm gonna initialize it at false. And then I'm just gonna specify here that I am on the client because I'm using hooks, which are client side functions. And then the button here, I'm just gonna pass the is active is equal to the is active from the state. And same thing, I'm gonna give it the responsibility of setting the menu open or not. That's gonna be the set is active function. And now inside of the button here, it has access to the is active property and the is active Active function and I can add on the button and on a click event and do set is active to the reverse of the active property. So if it's open, it's gonna close it. If it's closed, it's gonna open it. And after that, I need to create a division that's going to move up and down. And so I'm just gonna wrap those two elements inside another div that I'm gonna call the slider. And this guy will basically move up and down. So I'm gonna take those two elements and put them inside of the slider. And now to animate the slider, I'm gonna use firmer motion. So I can go ahead here and import motion from firmer motion. And I'm gonna add the motion tag 
in front of the slider. And then all I have to do is specify an animation and I can change the top property of the slider. Is the menu active? If it is, I want you to be translating by minus 100%. So it's going to slide up. And if it's not active, then I just want you to have a top of zero. And now for the top property to be working, all I need to do is go into styling here. And I'm going to specify here that the slider needs to be in position relative. And now the element is inside the slider and I can save that and we can see this. And now I'm going to click on the menu and boom, it's sliding up. And then I'm just going to reactivate the overflow hidden. And it's looking like this. If I click, it slides up and down. But now obviously there's a weird effect here. And I believe I simply need to specify that the slider should have a height and width of 100%. So it takes the full dimension of the button. So I'm going to save that. And if I click on it, now that makes a lot of sense. So this looks pretty clean to me. I have the first animation of the button. And to make this animation a bit more nice, I'm going to add an easing and a duration just so that it looks good. So I can come here and specify a transition and I can do a duration. I'm going to do like 0.5 second and I can specify an easing. And here I have the easing that I customized for this animation. Now, obviously it's a bit hard to visualize what that value is. So one thing I like to do is go on easings.net and here you can see like all the different easings. And then you can choose one like easing out quint and then you can grab that cubic bezier value here and copy paste that to have like your own easing so i'm going to save that and we should have something like this very clean animation and as you can see it's a bit nicer than when i don't specify a transition it makes everything a bit more polished so now i can work on the second animation of the button which is the perspective animation and if i look at the demo here i can see when i hover i have like basically the text is like doubled and it kind of like slides away in like a square motion kind of. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm just returning a paragraph inside of each element. But instead of returning a paragraph, I'm going to return another component, which I'm going to call like perspective text. And this guy will return a div that I'm going to call perspective text. And inside of it, I'm going to return two paragraphs. And here it's just going to take a label as a parameter. And I'm going to put the label so the text will be doubled. And then I can simply take that internal component and I'm going to replace it and put one inside each element. And I'm going to specify here the label should be menu. And then same thing here for the other element, but I'm going to change it and I'm going to do close. And now it looks like this. It kind of broke everything. We have the menu. We can see we have two menu and we have like two close. So now it looks like trash, but I'm going to fix that using CSS and I'm going to make the animation as well in full CSS. So I'm going to go into styling here and I'll specify here the perspective text. First of all, it should have a width of 100% and the height of 100%. And another thing I know is inside of it, I have a paragraph and I have a copy of it which is the second paragraph. And I know that the second paragraph, I want it to be in position absolute so that it's stacked on top of the other one. So I'm going to put it in position absolute and see what we have. And now we have something like this. So now I want the menu to be centered here. So I'm just going to take the display flex Allen items and justify content center. And I'm going to paste it inside of the perspective text. So everything is centered and that looks like this. And you can see that the text now kind of looks weird. And that's because there's like two of them stacked on top of each other's. And that's why it kind of looks more thick. And then just so that it's a bit more clean, I'm going to delete this inside of the element because the perspective text is taking the full width and the full height anyways. So I don't need to center things inside of the element. So I'm going to save this and we should have the same result just so that it's a bit more clean. And now the logic of this animation, by the way, I've done one in the past exclusively on this topic of like the perspective text. So you can check it out. It's a bit of an old video, but if you're interested, you can check it out. So what we need to do is create a transform and I'm going to do a rotate on the X axis and I'm going to do minus 90 degree. And now we don't see anything, but we can see that the text is not as thick. And that's because the second paragraph is now like, instead of being flat like this towards you where you can read it, it's now like like this so you don't actually see it and actually i'm gonna just do like 45 degrees so you can see and you're gonna see that it's kind of like rotating on the x-axis right so i'm gonna do like 75 like maybe 85 and you're gonna see you see like a small line that's basically what we want so i'm gonna do 90 degrees and then i want to do a hover css animation when i hover on the button i want to trigger the animation so here inside of the element i'm gonna add a hover and then what i'm gonna change is the perspective text and then what i'll do is basically i'll transform the parent and I'll move it back to a rotation that's like in reverse of what I did for the second paragraph. And now to see what's going on, I'm just going to add a transition. So here I have the transition that I created before and I target the transform value. And so it's going to work for that rotation here. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to hover and you can see that the menu is kind of rotating like this. And so that looks a bit weird because I have a second paragraph here that's supposed to be seen because it's in rotation minus 90 degrees. And then I'm rotating by 90 degree the parent. And so we should be seeing the second paragraph. But here I'm not seeing it. And the reason is 
I need to specify here a transform style to the parent and I'm going to do preserve 3D and that way I can create like a proper perspective animation. I'm going to save that and you'll see the difference. And now when I hover, I can see that I have my second paragraph appearing while the first one is disappearing. Now it looks a bit weird now, but we can fix that pretty easily by basically translating the first paragraph as it's disappearing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to unhover again. I'm going to target the paragraph and I'm going to target here the first one. And here I'm going to do a transform, but I'll do a translate Y minus 100%. And then I'll also add a transition to the paragraphs here. Same thing. And now that's kind of making sense. You can see that the first paragraph is like flipping over the second one. And the second one is also appearing from the bottom, right? That looks pretty good. Now, obviously it's a bit busy because they are overlapping on top of each other. So I'm going to animate the opacity here. So the second paragraph initially is going to have an opacity of zero. And then when I hover, I want to set the opacity of the first paragraph to zero and the opacity of the second paragraph to one. So I'm going to do it like this. And here the transition, I'm going to apply it to all. So not only the transform, but also on the opacity. And here you can see it looks pretty good. I have the first paragraph that's being like yanked on top and the second one that's appearing. But if I look closely, the second paragraph is like centered in the middle and it's just flipping over like this. And I want it to be like at the bottom and come on top like this. So there's another thing that we can change here, the transform origin of the second one. So I'm going to do transform origin and I'll do a bottom center. And that way I want it to appear from the bottom instead of being centered like this. And now it looks like this, which makes more sense, but it's also like translating now for some reason. So I'm going to fix that by adding here a translation of nine pixels. I'm going to do nine, not minus nine, but nine. And now it looks like this, a pretty sweet perspective animation. And now I'm going to move on to the animation of the windows menu. I'm going to use frame motion to expand the window and close it. So I'm going to be honest with you. This is going to be much simpler than the button. Okay. I'm going to have here a div, which is basically going to be the menu. And then I'm going to go into styling here inside of the header. I'm going to have the menu and I'm going to give it a certain height and a certain width. So those are the values that I found for the menu to be nice. And then I'll give also a background color. And I'm just going to take the same color that I had in the button here, which was like this yellow here. I'm going to save it and we should have something like this. I'm also going to add a border radius of 25 pixels and we have something like this. And now my button here is kind of getting yeeted. So here, instead of being relative, the button will be in position absolute. And then I'll specify a top zero and a left zero. And now it's here. I'm going to do top zero, right zero instead. And now it's back where it's supposed to be. And I'm just going to click here and we can see that it's like flush which is exactly what we want, right? It's like perfectly inside of the box. So same thing for the button. I'm going to use Framer Motion. So import Framer from Framer Motion. But now instead, I'm going to create a variance and that variance will have two state. One is open and one is closed. Now when it's open, I basically want to have a width and height that I specified here. So I'm going to do like this. And then when it's closed, I basically want that window to be the same dimension as the button so that it's kind of like closing inside of the button. So if I remember correctly, it's a hundred of width and the height is 40. And then I'm just going to grab the motion, add it to the div here. And then I'll specify the variance that I want to use is the variance that I just described. And then I can specify when should it be animated. And I'm going to do is the menu active. If it is, then I want you to take the open description of the variance. And if it's not active, I want you to take the closed description of the variant. And I can also specify that initially I want you to be closed. So I'm just going to specify that I want you to take definition of the closed state here. So I want to save that. And, and so we don't see the window anymore. I'm going to click and then boom, it's opening and it's closing like this. And I can try to break it and it's not breaking. So that's really good. Now there's another thing that I don't like when it's open. I would like to have kind of a margin here uh, because I don't want the button to be like precisely close like that. I would like to have like a little gap, a little margin. So I'm going to add extra values here when it's open. I want the top to be minus 25 and then the left. I want a minus 25 as well. And then when it's closed, I want to reset to zero. And yeah, for that to work, I'm just going to specify that it should be in pixels. And also here, instead of doing left minus 25 and set, it should be right minus 25 because the menu is on the right side. And then lastly, since I'm doing top and right property, I need to put the menu here in position relative so that it's actually going to work. And I'm going to try this out. If I click on the menu, boom, it's opening. There's like a small margin of 25 pixels, which is exactly what I want. And if I close, it goes like this really nice. And lastly, I want to add a transition to this animation so that it looks polished. So I'm going to basically take the same transition as the button here, this right here, and I'm going to specify here in transition like this, same thing for the close and I'll save this and let's see what we have. And now we have the menu. Now it's going 
a bit fast for my taste. So I'm just gonna slow it down to 0.75 seconds. And we should have something like this, a very nice animated Windows menu. And now I'll be working on the nav, which is all the text, which are being animated with a perspective animation as well. So the first thing I'm doing here is creating a nav component, and I'm just initializing a very simple React component. And then inside of the header, I import the nav. And if we take a look at this, we have the nav, and here I'm gonna open and close it. And now it kind of looks weird, but we're gonna fix all of that. So if I look at the demo here, I can see that I have a bunch of titles inside of the nav. And now instead of just hard coding all of those navs, I'm gonna create an array. And I'm just gonna map that array to return all of those texts. So what I'm gonna do here is inside of the nav, I'm just gonna create a data.js file. And here I'm just gonna export a const links, which is going to be an array. And inside of that array, it's gonna have a bunch of different objects with a title. And for example, the first one here is gonna be projects. And then it's gonna have an href. And I'm gonna do like backslash for now because this app doesn't have multiple pages, but eventually you would like to have like maybe your projects page like this. And so I'm just gonna do the same thing for all of them. So I have my array of links here and I'm just gonna import it inside of the nav. And here I can add some styling to the nav. I can do nav here. And inside of it, there's gonna be two things. One is the body and one is the footer. Now we're working on the body for now. And inside of the body, that's basically where I want to map the links. So I'm just gonna have links and I'm gonna do map. And here I have access to the link object and the index. And I'm just gonna return here a div that I eventually will be animating. And now that div needs a key and I can just basically do like the index. And inside of that div, I'm gonna have an anchor. And inside of that anchor, I have the title of the link and the href of the anchor. And now it's giving me an error for the style. So I'm just gonna do import styles here from the style sheet. And it kind of looks like this when the menu is closed. And when I open it, it looks like this. So now I'm gonna make all of this look good using CSS. So here I have the nav and also have the body. And let's start with the nav here. It's gonna have a height of 100% and I'm gonna add some padding too, a lot at the top and then a bit on the right, a bit more on the bottom and then the same thing on the left. And now since I'm doing height 100% and I'm adding some padding, it's gonna destroy the layout and for it to like stay tight inside of the parent, I need to specify a box sizing and I'm gonna do border box. And with that, the padding won't like overflow outside of the height 100%, that's like a small trick. And we should have something like this. So that looks pretty good for the nav. I'm gonna go on the body now and for each anchor inside of the body, I'm gonna do color black, text decoration none, and I'm gonna do font size 46 pixels. And we should have something like this. Now I'd like to have a bit more gap between the words. So I'm gonna put the body in display flex with a gap of like like 10 pixel and the direction should be in column. And now that looks pretty good. I'm quite satisfied with the look of this. So now I'm ready to animate everything. Now, obviously if I open and close, kind of looks like a complete mess, but it's fine. I'm gonna go in the nav here and same thing. I'm gonna import the motion from firm motion. And here to help with the structure, I'm just gonna add some parentheses. And by adding some parentheses, I can actually put this on a line and that looks a bit better for my eyes. And then I'm just gonna add some motion. And here I'm gonna specify a variant and I'm gonna call it like perspective. So now this perspective animation, I'll be creating it in an external folder again, and then I'll create this variant here. So I'm gonna have the perspective and that animation is going to be quite complex. It's gonna have three states, one being the initial, the enter and the exit. And I'm gonna start simple with the opacity. So initially it's gonna have an opacity of zero and that way it doesn't like look weird like this. I'm gonna have it being invisible at first. And when it enters, I'm gonna put the opacity to one and on exit, I'm gonna do opacity zero. And now I can go back here in my motion div and I can specify that the animate here should be the enter animation and the exit should be the exit animation and the initial should be the initial description that's all here. So I'm gonna save that and let's see if this actually works. I'm gonna refresh my page and then you can see that the animation is getting triggered as soon as the component mounts because that's actually an enter animation triggers as soon as the component mounts. And so what I'm gonna do, which is a bit different than like the body of the header, which was an animation based on like a state here. So here my nav, instead of always have it be present in the browser, I'm gonna have it be conditional to the is active state. So I'm gonna only return the nav if the state is active. I'm gonna save. And here we can see that I don't see the nav and I'm gonna open it and boom, I see it appearing. So the first thing that's throwing me off is the opacity is getting triggered like too early. I would like the menu to be open a bit before triggering the animation of those titles. So I'm gonna add a delay. So here in the enter, I'm gonna have a transition and I'm gonna just specify a delay of like 0 0.5. And that makes a bit more sense to me. But now I would like for the titles to be animated one by one and not at the same time. And so kind of like a staggering animation. So to do that, 
I'm just going to pass here a custom value to the animation. And I'm going to do custom here. It's going to be equal to the index. And so the first one will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And here in the enter, I now have access to that index here. And I can do plus the index. And I can do multiply by like 0 0.1. I'm going to try this out here. Boom. And now they are all appearing one after the other, which is good. And the next problem now is when I close it, it just disappears right away. It basically does not trigger the exit animation. And that's because here the is active when it is false, when it gets turned off, the nav just disappears from the browser. And so I basically want to tell it, hey, before unmounting, trigger your exit animation. I can do that with the animate presence from firmer motion. And I'll try this out and on the close, boom, you can see that I have my exit animation working, but now I kind of see it moving as the window close, which is not something I like. I'm going to basically add a delay on the window here. So basically the, the closed animation of the menu, I'm going to go here inside of the transition and I'm just going to add a delay of maybe 0 0.35. And that makes a lot of sense. It's kind of giving time to the titles to disappear before closing. So with that, we basically have the base and now we only need to make the animation of the titles a bit more fancy because right now it looks really dry, really normal. It looks still good, but we can make this much better. So I'm going back inside of the nav here and I'm going to be tweaking the perspective animation here. Instead of just changing the opacity, I'm going to be changing a bunch of other properties. The first thing I want to do is very similar to the button animation. I'm going to change the rotate X. So I'm going to do that initially. I want to have a rotate X of 90. And then on enter, I want you to reset the rotate X to zero. So let's see how that looks. And we have something like this. It's kind of like a panel that's getting like open like this. But honestly, this animation is quite boring. It's not really what I want. And to make it really nice, I need to add perspective to this. Since it's a rotation on the X value, if I add a perspective, it's going to be affecting it and it's going to look much better. So what I'm going to do here, it's going to get a bit more complicated. I'm going to add another div, which is going to be a parent here. And on the parent, I can actually add some perspective. I'm going to call it here the link container, and then I'll move the key to the parent. And we should have something like this. We now have a link container. That's the parent of all of our titles. And I'm going to take that link container and I'm going to start adding some styling to it. Basically, what I want to try to do is add a perspective. So I'm just going to add a perspective of 120 pixel. See what we have with that. And now it looks like this. You can see that it's quite different than when I didn't have a perspective. And to me, this looks a bit better. But now, obviously, the transition is like really weird. So I'm just going to change that. So here in the transition, I'm just going to start adding some properties. And I'm going to do like 0 0.65. And one thing that's really nice too is I can specify a duration for like the opacity. And for the opacity, I'm going to have a duration of 0 0.35. And that way the opacity animation is faster than the rotation. And finally, I'm just adding an easing here. And I'm going to try this. And honestly, this looks quite cool. One thing that we can tweak is the perspective here. We can play around with it and do like perspective origin. And we could do like perspective origin top, for example. And here you can see that it's quite changing the animation. And if I do bottom, you can see that it's also changing. And to me, this looks quite good. It's almost what we want. And let's say if I do like left, you can see that again, it's different. It's kind of a cool effect too, honestly. All of them looks really nice. It depends on your taste. You can tweak around with the perspective origin. It's quite a nice property. But for now, I'm just going to leave it at bottom. So this is really nice. I like it. I'm going to add some spice to this. I'm quite satisfied with the rotation, but I want to like kind of have a sliding effect as the title appears. And I want it to come from the left side and then up. So what I'm going to do is have an initial translate Y of maybe 80 pixel. And I'm also going to have a translate X of minus 20. And I'm going to reset them back to zero. And let's see how it looks. Freaking nice, right? This looks amazing. I'm really satisfied with that. And all of that is because we're using the perspective, all right? If I take off the perspective, you're gonna see that the result is much different. So this is how it looks without perspective. Kind of dry, right? And then you could change like the perspective and put like perspective origin, right? And you could play around with that. And honestly, that's really fun. You can see like a bunch of different effects. Like this is quite funky, but for now, I'm gonna leave it at bottom. And lastly here, all I'm gonna do is add a bit of transition for the exit animation, duration of 0 0.5 and the same easing as the button. I'm gonna save that. And this is just a small tweak to have like a nice easing on the opacity animation here. And that's basically it for the nav animation. And lastly, I'm gonna work on the footer component. So here inside of the nav, I had a body with the titles. And I'm just gonna create another div here, which I'm gonna call the footer. And I'm gonna have the same logic. I'm gonna go in the data here and I'll just export a const footer links. 
this time. It's going to have a bunch of objects very similar to the links. So it should look something like this. I'm going to take that footer links, import it with the main links, and I'm going to do the same thing as the links here. I'm going to map the footer links, have the link, the index. I'm going to return div. And here the div needs a key. I'm going to have a string. I'm going to do f and the index so that it's different from the key here. And very simply, I'm just going to have an anchor and then same thing, link the title. And here I'm going to animate the anchor. And here I'm going to take the same thing, but I'm going to have a different variance. I'm going to call it like slide in. And I'm also going to have a custom value. So there's like a delay between each element. And here I'm going to create the sliding animation, cons slide in. So I'm just going to copy paste this, but I'm going to modify it. Actually, I just want the opacity. And here on enter, I also just want the opacity. Now for the transition here, I'm just going to do 0 0.5. This won't matter. And for the delay, I'm just going to increase it a bit. And then I'm just going to add another property, which is going to be a Y of 20. So it's going to be lower at the beginning and it's going to slide up as it appears. So here I'm just going to reset the Y and that kind of makes sense. I'm going to save that, see what we have. Now, obviously the footer is not styled, so it might look a bit weird. We're going to see what we have. Okay, we can see that we have the footer here and it's appearing, working fine, but obviously the styling is off. So I'm going to go inside of the nav here and now we have the body and I'll have the footer. And the footer is going to be very simple. Display flex and I'm just going to have a flex wrap and all anchor will have a width of 50%. Copy paste this. So it should look like this. Now it's a bit tight. So what I'm going to do is inside of the nav, I'm also going to put it in display flex, but flex direction column. And I'm going to do a justify content space between. And that way, they're going to be both at the opposite of each other. And that makes quite sense. And I actually just realized I don't need to have a parent on top of the motion here. I'm just going to delete that and move this. And I'm just going to add the key directly to the anchor. And we should have something like this. That makes quite a lot of sense. And we can see with the animation. And to me, that looks really good. So yeah, that was the menu. So yeah, that was, so yeah, that was the recreation of so yeah, that was the recreation of this awards winning menu. I hope you learned something. I learned a lot while doing it. It was a ton of fun. The perspective text is quite fun to work with and to experiment. So hope you learned something. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.